All right, in this video, we're going to create the UI to handle our collectibles. Now we have some things we have to do. Well, first, we're going to create some unique collectibles in our level. So if we want to have a piece of cheese open a certain door in the future, we'll be able to set that up. Then we're actually going to create our UI objects, like our uh, images of collectibles and our count. Then we're going to revisit our UI manager, create some new uh, variables and functions. That'll do a bunch of different things like display a timed message saying we collected something and an update function that will uh, keep our scene, our item count accurate and uh, updates. Uh, it checks if there's unique items and updates the UI accordingly. All right, so let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to do is create some unique items in our level. So we're going to do that by creating uh, a different kind of prefab here. So I'm going to build off of my current prefab. Let's just reset its uh, transforms. We'll put it right here. And then what I'm going to do, let's turn off the light so I can see. I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to give it a new name. This is pretty important. We're going to call this Collectible Unique PFB. And then if we drag it into our prefabs, we're going to make it an original prefab. And then why don't we click into it to get in there. And we're going to turn this cheese into a big cheese. That big cheese is going to be big. And then I think I can get rid of this. Uh, well, let's just move them into back into props. I don't need those models anymore. I have my two collectibles now. Uh, and we're going to set unique to unique. So these are already going to be set as unique right there. And uh, pretty good. All right. And we're going to color code our cheeses as well. I want to create a uh, just a little particle system here. Right. And pairing it to my model. And uh, I'm just going to make it real simple. Okay. I'm going to decrease its size to like 0.2 or maybe like 0.05. Uh, we're going to take its speed down to like 0.5 and its lifetime down to like 1. And we're going to take its shape and we're going to make it emit in a sphere around and let's just tighten up that radius. All right. Uh, and we'll have like, uh, maybe let's put out some more. There we go. I still feel like that's too fast. There we go. I'm not going to do anything more complex than that. And But what I will do is maybe uh, turn this color into kind of like a yellowish. Like it's a golden cheese of power. All right. So that's how we can kind of get a nice particle system going. And those particle systems are going to help me tell my different cheeses apart. I'll have different colors for each cheese. All right. So that's a small one. I think I had that on the desk. Let me put it back there. All right. You know what? I'm actually going to delete this cheese. And this is my identifier of zero. So let's just get it out of my scene altogether. And we'll put the big cheese there. So we'll have the big cheese. I changed my mind. I want to keep that there at zero. Come on, cheese. Let's position it just right. And I want to take this cheese and put it right here because I think it's a little bit darker there. It might look a little bit cooler if it's sparkling in the night. Okay, so that was cheese two. All right, quit zooming out, please. All right, so that was cheese two. So we're going to give it the identifier of two again. So we kind of just replaced it. So every cheese is going to have that unique identifier. We're going to give this a value of five. All right. So that's how we can put a unique collectible in our level. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And I want to put two of these in my shop scene. All right. We'll put one. Uh, we'll replace this one. Cheese number three. So be sure if you're replacing, know which identifier it is. All right. 
So we'll delete that out. And uh, why don't we go ahead and put a big in, or a unique one in, rather. All right, just using our snap vertice to kind of get us halfway there. So this is number uh, three, I believe. I'll go back and double double check of everything. I want to delete the or duplicate this and put another big one right here. All right. Sweet. <clears throat> And uh, let's just make sure I have, there's cheese four, six, three, and I guess this is number five. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the particle systems of all these different cheeses and change their light. So that one, the first one we had was kind of uh, a yellow. So in this particle system, why don't we make it kind of like a, a blue. We'll do yellow, blue, and green. All right, so we'll know that that's the blue cheese right there. Uh, your particle system should be a little bit more sophisticated than that, but for demo purposes. All right, so we have uh, yellow cheese, green cheese, and blue cheese. Two of the, one of those cheeses you probably shouldn't eat. Um, it's the green one. All right, so now that I got my uh, unique cheeses placed, we're going to save. All right, and uh, why don't we test out to see what they look like. So let's make that window a little bit bigger. Let's just maximize. So there's a cheese. There's my golden cheese right there. And then we'll go to the other scene. Uh-oh, it looks like my identifiers are weird. So there's my green cheese. My blue cheese didn't show up, though. So let's figure out what's going on. All right, so let's just double-check our identifiers. I'm glad this came up. So that's 0, 1, and 2. So uh, in our inventory manager, we should – or our U yeah, inventory manager, we still have – I guess somewhere in the process of me demoing this, I checked one of those boxes, and guess what? Cheese 3 was our blue cheese. So be careful of that, right? Don't go clicking those bullions all willy-nilly. So yellow cheese. Blue cheese. And the green cheese. And then all these little guys. Click the cheese. All right, perfect. Let's continue. So next, why don't we actually create the UI for uh, all of our elements we're about to make. All right. We have uh, three different kind of UIs, things to do. We need to create a timed message display. We need to create a UI count of how many collectibles we have. And we need to create some uh, yellow cheese, red cheese, and blue cheese to tell the player that we have some specific cheese we want them to cheddar out on. Uh, dangerously cheesy. Okay. That joke was so bad, it threw me off what I need to do. Okay, so we're going to go into our UI manager. And there's my canvas. So we're going to play around and create some uh, new uh, UI elements in our canvas here. So why don't we create our uh, uh, timed message system? Uh, so right here, we have press E to exit the room. Why don't we uh, do build off the backbones of this? But this time, let's call this a uh, timed message. And why don't we go in here and turn on our gizmo so we can see our UI and reposition this guy to maybe right up there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and kind of edit its background so it's more kind of stretched out so we have a bigger message to play with. Let's center it like so. And then the text, we're going to kind of make sure it can encompass this. So if we have a long message, it can fit it. So I'm just, all right. So if we see in our game view, we have a pretty big uh, timed message that'll pop up for us. 
Sweet. Uh, and this will be a... Uh, why don't we just put some text like this is the time, the message that will go on and off. So uh, that'll be kind of our test text. Perfect. All right. So we got our timed message going. Uh, we'll go back in and uh, access those things in our script in a second. But we're just creating our the way our UI looks right now. All right. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is import some sprites that will help my uh, visual style of my level. You can see I have these two guys right here. So we have a cheese and a cheese silhouette. These will be what we need to get uh, our UI looking good. So I'm going to go down to my textures here. And I'm going to just want to drag and drop these uh, transparent PNGs onto my textures. And let's consider them real quick. So I'm going to select these in my new project window. We need to make sure they're turned to sprite over in my inspector import settings, sprite 2D and UI, and hit apply. And that'll turn these into the kinds of uh, uh, sprites that we need in our scene. So that's perfect. So we're gonna create a new uh, um, UI in our scene for how many cheeses we have. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, inside of my canvas here, so select your canvas, in your inspector and go to game object and create a UI. And we're gonna do our image first of like a block of cheese maybe. So we get this white thing right here, kind of like the background for our uh, uh, message. But we're gonna just drag and drop cheese color as that sprite there. And why don't we position it like uh, right up here. Nice. And I think I kind of want to, should I rotate it? Ah, don't complicate it. All right, so that's good. And we're going to call this uh, count image. And what we're going to do next is also create a new UI of a text field. And we're going to count, call this our count text. And I think what we can do is just place it right over our cheese maybe because we're only gonna have like 01 written on it. Let's take our f old English font and apply it. And you know what, let's make sure that we have some black text. Maybe will white work better? We'll see what works better for the cheese in a second. Let's increase its font size maybe. Let's align it to the center. And let's put it right kind of at the bottom of our cheese. And that way we kind of have a counter of cheeses in our level. Maybe make it a little bit bigger, bigger font. 30. So that's pretty good. Look, we got a little count there. Oh, one. I think that'll do just fine. All right. So, uh, and it seems to scale okay with everything. Yep, checking different aspect ratios. Nice, but 16.9 is what we should be working in. So there's my count image and text. And we're just gonna leave those. I'm gonna put those at the top. We're not really gonna mess with those ever. There's always gonna be displayed there. Uh, okay, the, the order got messed up there. So image, then the text on top. All right, and next, why don't we create our uh, unique, uh, our unique images, sorry. A video cut out. Uh, so we're basically going to kind of do the same thing here with the way we did our count, except it's got a little bit of caveat to it. Uh, we're going to create a new UI. And uh, I'm going to go ahead actually and create an empty game object because there's going to be a lot of stuff that I want to be able to, to uh, well, yeah, I guess it won't let me. Um, if I go into my prefab UI, or you know what, let's unpack the prefab for right now. That way we can add some objects to it. And then we'll uh, just save it as a prefab again. So I'm going to place this game object inside of my uh, canvas. And this is going to hide hold all my unique uh, images. And then from there, I'm going to add just a bunch of images like so. I'm going to position the first one over here 
And what I'm going to do is this image is going to be my uh, unique A background. I don't know, unique, whatever. I don't know what it's called. Let's call it unique uh, A, for sure, background. And uh, we're going to take my texture and put the black silhouette on it. So you can see we have like a little nice silhouette of a cheese right here in my game view now. So that's going to tell the player that maybe we need to collect something in our scene to uh, make this not black anymore. And then I'm going to duplicate it. So I get it right on top. Don't move it from here. And then unique a uh, collected. And on this one, I'm going to put the color in. There we go. As you can see, if I turn this object on and off, it's like I've collected it. We're gonna do something interesting with these two though. This is gonna be my yellow cheese. So I'm gonna take its color value and kind of shift it yellow. So maybe now my background has a yellow tint to it. You know, just barely. And then my foreground definitely has a yellow tint because it's a cheese. All right. And what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this. And in my scene view over here, why don't we just move it down? Pretty big cheeses on the thing. And we're going to change its color to blue. Light blue if we can. All right, let's see how that looks in our background. Yep, there's our blue silhouette. And we're going to call this unique B background. And unique B collected. It's not the most sophisticated UI, but it gets the job done. And we have color coordinated stuff going on. You can always spend more time making specific sprites for all this stuff. And this is going to be a background C. So you see, I just duplicated it again. And we just bring it down here. And why don't we change it to green? All right. Maybe that blue should have been red. Uh, we can. I'll go into the shop. Now nah, we'll just keep it blue. If it gets weird, it gets weird. All right. So now we have a bunch of uh, background things. Why don't we put it? Why don't we uh, parent them now inside of our unique images so we can have a little bit of a cleaner canvas there. All right, nice. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off all the collected ones. So we're just left with some silhouettes there. Let's press play and see what we get. All right. So we get a UI. But nothing's being updated. We have this time message that just keeps going. Now it's time to add some uh, functionality here. All right. So uh, we're going to revisit our UI uh, manager right here. And why don't we look at what we've created in our hierarchy? We have a new count text that's going to keep uh, track of how many uh, cheeses we've collected. And we have this new exit text that will give us a message whenever we uh, activate this message on and off. So we need to have some variables that we can access these two texts with and set what they display on screen. All right, so let's go in and uh, we're just making variables right now in our UI manager. And we're going to create a uh, public um, text not text alignment, public text count text. Why is it doing that? Text isn't recognized. Well, I guess we need to add using unity engine dot UI. And boom, we get instant recognition. So we're accessing a new library. So we have a count text and a timed message text. All right, so this is uh, variables we'll use to create uh, update that what we see on the screen, update these text fields on our screen for us. Words are hard. All right, what we need next is uh, 
Let's see. We need to create a uh, uh, some functionality in our update collectibles uh, uh, function right here that we call, or we should be calling right here. So we got to create this functionality in our UI messenger or in our UI manager. All right. So we know that that's happening. So we can get rid of that debug.log or you can keep it. Uh, but what we need to do now is say uh, count text dot text. So uh, our count text up here. And what are we going to do with it? Well, what is our count text? Hmm. You know what we should do? Let's go ahead and save this and show what these text fields are doing inside of our inspector. So count text and time message text, they're empty right now. So what we need to do is go to our hierarchy and drag these fields in the count text. And uh, ooh, I need to rename these things, don't I? Remember when I duplicated this? I never uh, changed the names of these. So we'll say timed background and timed text. So let's be organized. Uh, so my UI manager and my time text will go right there. So now we have direct access to these text fields right here. And what we want to update is this value right here called text. And this will this is basically what we type in and what gets displayed on the screen. So that's what's going on there with those variables. So now that we have access to these two variables in our code, because we just assigned them in our inspector, we can do some things with them. We can say our count text dot text, that little uh, text field where we can type in stuff. We're not going to manually set that anymore. We're actually going to tie that to inventory manager dot instance dot count, collectible count. So now, let's see. We have a uh, cranky error message, and it says, cannot convert type int the string. Because our text field right here only wants, you know, a text. Hmm, so what can we do here? Uh, why don't we convert this uh, integer to a string by using the to string function? And that makes it all good. So whatever our integer is, we convert it to a string and then set it to our text field, which controls what gets displayed right here on our big cheese. All right, so why don't we test that to see if it works? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off timed message, turn off exit room, and why don't we just look at our screen here? Ah, uh, it's not updating. All right, let's see what we can do to get that to actually update now. We never called it inside of our collectible, so I went and found that. So that's why we create these comments. So, you know, we know, okay, so I made this. What's the next step? Well, you know, because you get a comment to tell you. So when you go sleuthing through, it's a pretty easy uh, thing to solve. So we say instance uh, uh, update collectibles. Is that what it wants? All right. So it's asking for some parameters here. So uh, remember when we set this up, we knew we were going to have to pass in its identifier and if it's unique or not. So let's pass that in. So we'll say identifier number and unique or not. So that'll pass the true or false there. Right there. That's perfect. So now whenever we uh, run into this, it's going to call our update collectibles. It's going to pass our identifier number in. And if it's unique or not, because we still have a little bit of extra work to do here. So if it's unique, it'll be able to update our three little cheeses right here. All right. But for right now, I think we get an update. One cheese, six cheeses, seven cheeses, eight, nine, ten. And 11. Oh, green cheese is only worth one because you shouldn't eat poison. 
and no more collectibles to uh, collect. So all we need to do now is to update our UI to show us that we've collected a uh, particular unique cheese and we'll have that functionality working for us. All right, so let's do that. So to actually get this to fire off, we're going to do a little bit of uh, interesting uh, work with arrays in our UI manager. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to create uh, and we're going to we're going to create these arrays and we're going to program this in a way where it offers flexibility to the level designer. Of course, we could hard code these images to pop on and off to every uh, image. But if you're a level designer, you don't want something hard coded. You want something that you can tweak in your inspector. So it becomes like a jack of all trades kind of tool for the uh, designer. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to create a public uh, game object array. And we're going to call it unique uh, images. All right. We're going to create another one, public game object. No, public uh, int. And we're going to call this uh, unique identifiers. I hope I spelled that right. All right, so these two uh, ob uh, arrays right here will, uh, well, let's see what they do. All right, so we get this updated. Did I make them public inventory manager? Oh, I guess we needed to make these in our UI manager. I'm dumb. I'm going to copy and paste these elsewhere. We don't need to put them in. So, haha, <laughs> yeah, I made you do that. All right, so this, sorry about that. All right, cool. So in our UI manager, uh, we're going to just put those variables there. I would go back and edit that out, but live and learn. I don't feel like doing it. <laughs> All right, so we, uh, you know, see your heroes make mistakes. You, you know, you have, I would say more respect for them, but it doesn't make sense. We have our, our object arrays here and our int array here. And why don't we set these up in our inspector? So this is what the level designer would do, okay? They have these new arrays here, and they're manually going to set their sizes. So I have three unique uh, items in my game. So we do three and three. All right. And what we're going to do is we're going to tie our unique A collected to this, to that, and to here. So all of my uh, unique collected images, remember, these are the things that uh, I select them all and activate them. These are the things that tell the player that they've gotten them. Bling, we got them. So uh, this uh, array right here will control how we can turn on and off those images. And then how do we know which collectibles will turn this on and off? Well, we're going to pair the identifier of these unique items to the indexes here. So is unique A, our yellow cheese, what's its identifier? So let's go find out in our scene. Let's get out of this 2D. So I've selected my uh, yellow cheese. Its unique identifier is two. It should turn on and off UI A of our cheese there. So two it is. So the identifier for my yellow cheese, unique uh, cheese A, is two. And I'm going to go ahead and save this scene and then open up my shop. And I'm going to go ahead and see what the identifiers are of blue cheese. So it's three, blue is three, and green is identifier five. All right, so look at that. That's what we're looking at. So uh, being able to set up these uh, variables will help us make sure that the right unique collectibles are activating the right UI for us. So let's go back to our house. Let's go back to my UI manager. And I think it was three and five. So uh, element one in these arrays will be uh, our blue cheese, which we call unique B. And its identifier is three. Unique C will be green. And its identifier will be five. And this is going to offer us a lot of uh, power in our scripting to, to control exactly what we want to turn on and off. All right, so now that we got that set up, why don't we uh, code for it? 
So let's visit our code and make that happen. All right, so what we're gonna say is we're gonna take advantage of that unique param right here. So if we call our update collectibles function and it is a unique parameter, then it's gonna trigger this if statement. So if unique parameter equals true. Yeah, so if this is a unique uh, collectible, then we're gonna trigger this if statement. And inside here, we're gonna say for int i, we're gonna create a for loop that loops through our arrays that we just created. Uh, equals unique, uh, let's see, unique uh, identifiers dot link. So we're gonna loop through our array of how many identifier of our identifiers are uh, in i plus plus. And then what we're gonna say is if, all right, so we're looping through this for loop and we're gonna use this i counter to be able to look at each of these corresponding elements. So the i will be like zero and zero. So we'll be able to identify this to this. And if it's a uh, identifier param, we'll be able to compare all these things together to turn on the right UI. All right, so we're gonna say if unique identifiers, which one in that array? Well, whatever, uh, whichever uh, loop we're going through right now. So the first time through will be uh, index zero right here in our array. And we're gonna compare its identifier to whatever was passed in from the collectible we just got. So if that collectible equals equals identifier param, so meaning that yes, it's unique, and the identifier param that we passed in from the collectible matches these identifiers we went through and found in our scenes. So if these up match up, then boom, that's one of the unique collectibles we need to pop off. And right here, which one do we need to pop off? Well, the exact one that has the identifier param that matches. And then we say unique images, which one? Well, the same uh, one in the index that we're currently looping through. So if we're looking at uh, you know, the identifier two, then we'll know that this is element zero. So we knew we need to turn that collectible on in our UI. So we'll say that dot game object dot set active to true. And we're gonna keep them inactive until they get collective. And then we're gonna set them to active whenever this code checks out. All right, so let's test that functionality. All right, so I press play and I get the yellow cheese, it pops up. Ooh, I don't mind if I do go to the other room. So let's go get the green cheese. And because the identifiers match up, I know I got it. And boom, I got my blue cheese. I got that cheese. I guess I must have bumped into that cheese and picked it up. Here are all the rest of my cheeses. No other cheese that I haven't collected. And boom, our UI is working really good right now. All right, next, uh, why don't we take care of our timed message uh, function? So every time we get a collectible, uh, we get a message saying what happened that'll disappear after a second or two. All right, so the first thing we need to do in our code is we need to make a new empty game object, kind of like how we did for our exit room message. These two messages are gonna function the same where they just get turned on and off. So we're gonna call this timed message. Let's save. And let's see what happens in our hierarchy here with our UI manager. All right, so you see we have exit room message attached to our exit room message, but we have none there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our canvas and we're gonna drag and drop a timed message over here. So our time message is currently turned off. So our code routine is gonna turn this on and off for us that we're about to make. All right, perfect. So now that we got that assigned, why don't we go ahead and use make some code that makes use of it?
All right. So we're going to come down here and create a brand new function. It's going to be public. Public void timed message. It's going to take two parameters. First is going to be a float of time param. So how long do we want to display the message? The second is going to be a string parameter. So what message do we want to show on the screen? And these are set. Well, do we have a setting for those? Because when we collect the collectible, we want to fire off this timed message. All right. So let's go to collectible. Hmm. All right. So we already got this one that updates our collect message. So I guess what we need to do is go to UI manager dot instance dot timed message. And we want to pass in some variables. So why don't we create some new uh, public variables so we can dictate what we want to say and dictate uh, uh, how long it pops up. So let's do a public string uh, message string and a public float called uh, display time. And uh, we'll go and set those in a second for all of our uh, uh, objects in our scene. But right here, it's getting cranky because uh, it doesn't have the parameters we want to show. So we're going to say display time. We want to pass an integer first and then our message string. I believe that's how we set up our function over here. Yeah, our time and then our message second. So let's go in and see how that changes the nature of my collectibles. All right. So I select the collectible. And I have a string I can type right here in display time. So we'll do uh, three seconds and we'll say, got one cheese. All right, so that's what that's gonna say. Oh, I guess we need to do the same thing. Got one cheese and display time of three seconds. All right, so with our unique collectible though, we might say something else. You found the yellow cheese and we'll display that for three seconds as well you found the yellow cheese man perfect and we'll save the scene and we'll go in and we'll update the collectibles in my shop scene so i'm going to select both of the small ones first because i'm going to make them say the same thing so i select them both and say you've got one cheese and display it for three seconds. I'll select both of my uniques. I'll make them display for three seconds, but they kind of need to say different things, right? Well, what we can do is you found the blue cheese and then I'll select this unique, my, uh, which, which cheese is this? Okay. That's my green cheese. So we'll change blue green all right and we'll save that so now uh, all my collectibles have uh, some UI considerations so we're really empowering our level designer to make as many uh, different collectibles and I'll give them separate identif identities to give them separate values for how much they increase our count to display uh, a message when we get them and for how long do we want to display it and if we want to tie it to a unique UI we can as well so just really about empowering those level designers as uh, programmers most of the time. All right, so let's go into my house. We'll save. We're not quite done yet. We're not ready to test because all we've done is uh, type in some values for some variables we haven't used yet. So in my timed message, what we want to do is say uh, timed message text equals or uh, the text that we assigned up here, the text field in it, we want to set it equal to our message param. And that'll update what it says whenever our message pops up in, on the screen with that old English. And then we want to uh, start a coroutine. And we're going to make a coroutine in a second. We're going to make a coroutine called counter. And we're going to just pass in that time param that got passed in to this function. So yeah, you can pass parameters into other functions where they become another parameter. And so to start up a coroutine, we say IE numerator. Numerator uh, coroutines are just a good way to uh, 
make timers basically. And we're going to accept another time param. Like so. It's getting cranky because uh, enumerators need a, uh, something returned. But before we uh, fix that, we're going to say timed message dot set active to true. So we're going to actually display our timed message object on the screen. And then we're going to say yield return new wait for seconds. And then how long? Well, how long are we going to wait for seconds? Our time parameter. And then after we wait three seconds, we go back to my timed message object, set active to false. Oh, how do you make a, a semicolon again? There we go. All right, so that should do it. It'll uh, overwrite whatever text we want to say with whatever parameter, the string parameter we pass in. It starts a coroutine that passes along our time parameter. And remember, these are two things we just set in our inspector. And then it starts up a coroutine that displays our message. It waits the amount of time that we set over here in our display time for that particular item. And then after so many seconds right here, we set it back to inactive. All right. So uh, why don't we see how this works? Got one cheese, please. <laughs> you got one cheese. Oh, we can go to the next room. Oh, you found the yellow cheese, man. I'm way too excited for this simple mechanics, right? You got one cheese. You got the blue cheese. You found the green cheese. Our UI updates. Man, it's like we have a real game now all of a sudden. All right. So uh, that should cover all the parameters for what we need to achieve as uh, level designers right now. So there we have it. Some uh, crude but yet working UI that displays everything we need it to. So the player's not just wandering around like an idiot in your level. Thanks.